first of my tank makeovers and this is for the Mark 6B British light tank as you can see here in all its glory. So this is just painted up with no weathering effects on it whatsoever. And here is, well, I suppose you'd call it the finished product. This is, <laughs> this is it after I've had a go, basically. This is my first attempt at sort of weathering a tank. Um, I've done an okay job, I think. I don't think it's perfect by any means. Uh, the first job I did wasn't actually a weathering effect at all. It was to actually do something about these decals. Because when I put them down initially, they were looking a bit sort of bubbly. There were some air bubbles underneath them. They weren't really lying flat. So what I did, I got some of this setting solution, strong one, and I daubed it over the decals, all of them, and left it for a little while. And uh, when I came back, yes, all the air bubbles had vanished and they were sitting much flatter than they were before. The idea of the setting solutions is they sort of partially melt the decals. And when they dry out, everything sticks down much more firmly. That worked very, very well in this case. Quite nice. Then the second job was to give it a, a satin coat. And I wanted to do that because I'd heard it helped with the pin wash. And the satin I used was this stuff. I got it off Amazon. And it's the Army Painter Aegis Suite. I don't know what that means, but it's um, a satin varnish. And the idea with a satin or a gloss surface is that when you do a pin wash, it helps the paint flow a little bit easier. Although having said that, I've tried pin washing without putting any varnish on and it's worked just as well, really. But the idea is that you put on the varnish and then you get a brush loaded with a little bit of um, paint, a nice fine one. I'll take that off. And you just go around sort of dabbing on all the rivet heads just to give them a bit more contrast, which is what I did. The paint I used for that was just normal oil paint from, a, from an oils painting set. And what I did, I've got some examples here. I put dabs of the oil paints on kitchen towel. Got some different colors here. And the kitchen towel helps draw out the castor oil or whatever oil is used in the paint, it's some sort of vegetable oil. Because without doing that, this takes ages to dry apparently. And even though these have been sort of drying out for a long, long time, they're still fairly plastic, it's still very usable. So even now, if I wanted to use some of this paint, I would just load a brush with some thinner, it's like some white spirit, dab it over that, and that would um, take off enough paint to be usable. So that's what I did the pin wash with, all the way around. I just tended to use the darker paints. After that, I decided to try and muddy up the bottom of the tank. Well, that might be quite interesting. Ignore the tracks, the tracks are a complete disaster. I'll go into them in a little bit more detail later. Um, to make this mud effect, this is actually sort of like a homemade thing. What I did was I got some dirt from the garden and dried it out and sieved it. And then I mixed it with some PVA glue, just regular craft glue. And then I got these various pigments. Um, I can't remember what I use now, but this is natural umber. This is burnt umber. And I've got um, European earth. And I've got this humbral weathering powder. And I just mixed it up with the glue and the dirt and then slathered it on using quite a thick brush. So I just used a, a brush to get in there, put on loads of that mixture. And once it had dried, I realized that it was, it was, really, it was really too thick. It was sort of out of scale. This is the pot I used. And you can see how it's quite crusty. So this is all dried now. This is the original mixture for my first layer. And it's, it's, it's sort of out of scale, it's, it's too gritty. So I went back and had another go, but this time rather than using sort of dirt from the garden, I created a much smoother mixture using talcum powder. And I did exactly the same thing. I mixed up talcum powder and the glue and some uh, pigments. But I chose lighter pigments this time and then just painted that over the original mud layer. I think it looks fairly good. It's not brilliant, but this is a learning process my first time. I also got some 
kits. Some Life Color kits. I've got this um, Rain and Dust makeup kit from Life Color. And I've got this Dust and Rust kit again from Life Color. And they're very good kits. They're, they're a little bit expensive. I think about 20 pounds each, which is um, quite steep, I think. And I've got a lot of dust now. I've got Dust Type 2, Dust Type 1. Lots of rust shades. And in this kit, you get rain marks, which are quite good, and lots of um, dust and earth and more dust and a bit of soot thrown in and some free remover, which is nice. And so if you put too much on, you can take it off again. So using those kits, I probably put too much dust on. What I was trying to do was trying to get rid of some of this gloss. The satin stroke gloss finish is a bit strong, I think. So I was trying to cover that up a little bit. I don't think I succeeded, but um, using the sort of like a diluted dust mixture, I ran that along um, various joins and places where dust would normally collect. So for example, down here, which I thought was reasonable. And it sort of helps um, pick out the detail a little bit. I think it's pretty good. And here you can just see the rain marks. So I've applied lots of little sort of vertical stripes using the rain marks, just to liven it up a bit, making it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not perfect. I think it's like the gloss finish spoils it a little bit. But I'm fairly pleased. Not at all pleased with the tracks. The tracks are a disaster, as I mentioned. <laughs> I got, um, as you see, I've got all these rust effects now. So I wanted it to sort of rust up the wheels a little bit. But of course, well, unfortunately, I, if I'd thought about it, I would have actually rusted up the tracks before I put on the mud, but I didn't. So now I've got lots of rusty looking mud on these tracks, which is not good. I've more or less given up on the track trying to make that look decent because it's fairly horrible. But I think that the rust effect is very nice. I mean, it looks incredibly authentic. But there we go, I've covered a few little techniques there, things that I never tried out before. Pin wash, the dust washes, you know, the, uh, the varnishing, creating their own mud, which I think it looks nice actually. The trick with the mud apparently is to put the lighter colored mud on first because that represents mud that's been around a long time and has dried out. So you put a thin layer of lighter colored mud and then glob over that additional mud, less of it, but more globby, which is darker, and that represents sort of more recent wet mud that has found its way around the wheels. But yeah, all in all, you know, I think it's not a bad start. Not a bad start. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll join me for some more in the near future. And until I see you again, I should say goodbye. Okay then, cheerio.